going to be talking today as we continue in this January series about the new year and just kind of looking at this new year and making sure that we are um, facing this new year with the right priorities and, and with the right focus. And we've enjoyed some uh, wonderful studies already. We talked about the first week, an aimless life and, and, and what that looks like. And then last week we talked about how we need to make our life count. And then today we're going to talk about a focused life. Um, we're going to be talking a lot about this word focus and we're going to basically call our lesson today a title, The Power of a Focused Life. Um, John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, lived in the 1700s. I want you to read this quote. It's on your outline, but, but follow along as I read this quote from John Wesley. John Wesley says this. He says, Though I am always in a haste, I am never in a hurry, because I never undertake more work than I can go through with perfect calmness of spirit. What's your first reaction to those deep, deep words and that wonderful, powerful quotation from this spiritual giant, John Wesley? What, can you identify with what he's well, just... Well, John Wesley was a traveling preacher, right? Yeah. On horseback. Right, yeah. So, uh, I'm sure walking a mile in his shoes is yes. probably just a real busy guy. Yeah, yeah. Now, how does that, in, in his... <clears throat> In his quote here, Craig, he he says he he says that he is always in haste, but he's never in a hurry. Now, how does that? What is he yeah, trying he to tell that us? An oxymoron. Frame yeah. Of mind. Frame, of mind. <laughs> Frame of mind. Okay. Not moving until God puts something on his orders. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Now, there's a great. I've never seen this verse in all my years, but I want you to turn to Psalm chapter 39. And I want you to look at the first part of verse 36. There is a passage of scripture here that reinforces what John Wesley is quoting to us. In Psalm chapter number 39, the first part of verse 6, the psalmist writes this. He says, we are merely moving shadows and all of our busy rushing ends in nothing. Wow, that's the psalmist writing those words. Those are so powerful. They describe our lives today. Sometimes we're just nothing but moving shadows, just darting back and forth all over the place and, and just lacking, lacking that purpose, if you will, rushing around. You ever feel like that? Y'all ever feel rushed? You ever feel like you don't have enough hours in the day? Do you ever wonder where your time went? You ever wish you could get more time? All right, let me read you a few things about time. Few things are more dangerous to a person's character than having nothing to do and plenty of time which to do it. A committee usually keeps minutes and wastes hours. <laughs> The best thing to spend on your children is time. The easiest way to find more time to do all the things you want to do is, you can tell this is dated a little bit, is turn off the television. <laughs> That's so you true, isn't it? You change it and say, yeah, 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 you say, <laughs> time, time is so powerful, it is given to us only in small quantities. I like that. Time is what we want the most and what we use the worst. Counting time is not nearly as important as making time count. I like that one too. The busy man seems to have time for everything. The man who just thinks he's busy has time for anything. <laughs> I can identify with that. Oh, I love this one. Today is the tomorrow you worried about yesterday. Those are just some thoughts on time. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about how we manage our time. Are you good time managers? 
<clears throat> you manage your time pretty good? Sometimes. Sometimes? Okay. All right. Do you feel like that sometimes we're busier than we've ever been in our lives? Okay. All right. Here's one. How does Satan use the busyness of time to his advantage? Randy, here's my brother, Randy. Come on in the house, brother. Good to see you, Randy. God bless you, brother. Yes, sir. God bless you. Have a seat right there. God bless you. Good Thank to have you this Thank morning. You very much. This is Randy Saxon, folks. This is Tony Saxon, brother. Randy, God bless you. Good to have you this I'm, morning. It's my pleasure to be here. Good, good, good. Um, how, how does how does Satan um, use the busyness of our life to his benefit? Think about that for a minute. Takes you away from God and God's purpose. You okay. Devotion time, your prayer time. Okay. Okay. Gets you frustrated. Gets okay. Your emotions and okay. all the wrong places a lot of times. Right. Okay. Irritable. Yeah. 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 And God created us. So yep. anything he can do to get our mind off of God. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. You know, Satan is a clever, clever adversary. And um, if he can't make us do something bad, okay, if he can't if he can't get to us because we are <clears throat> resting in our Lord Jesus Christ, and so he can't get to us to make us do something quote bad. Guess what he does next? Yeah, he makes you so busy that you don't have time for the Lord. So, so he's working kind of around, behind, hitting your head on and making you do something that you know is wrong and that you know is bad. He comes at you and he just makes us so busy in our lives. What can we do better to manage our life our time to bring glory to the Lord. What can we do better? You and I, this is just an open discussion. There's no wrong answer. It's just, it's just your thoughts and we're sharing with one another. How have you been able to fight this busyness in the world that we live in today to keep your focus in your life where it needs to be? What are some of the practical things that you have learned to do over time? Meet God in the morning. You meet God in the morning. Okay. How does tell us what meeting God means to you, Dottie? It means getting my coffee and sitting down with my Bible and okay. my journal and okay. my devotion book that I'm reading at the moment mm -hmm. and spending that time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. That okay. just seems to go better. When Absolutely. I start there. Okay. All right. Someone else. How? Have you been able to push back on the busyness in your life and manage your time with God in a, an, an effective way? I think you have to evaluate all the busyness in your life. Is, okay. it, is it important? Do I need to reduce some of that busyness? You kind of okay. have to, and you got to do that on a continual okay. basis. You can't just do okay. that January 1 for the whole year because it. Okay. comes up. So I think you have right. to focus on and prioritize for the Lord what, okay. what is essential. Alright, so so uh, we could say this. What is essential in our lives and what is trivial in our lives? What is essential in our lives and what is trivial in our lives? Sir, well, exactly Randy. what is trivial mean? Trivial, unimportant, okay. uh, uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of uh, um, reading that iPhone, you know, just trivial stuff, you know, that doesn't, that's not essential. Really. But it's taking, it's taking your time. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's something. Oh, we're letting it take our time. Exactly. So that's something, Randy and Wanda, you guys are right. In life, we need to evaluate what is essential and what is trivial. And if we're going to live a focused life and have power in this life here on this earth, then we're going to need to come to this area right here and, and do some hard examination of ourselves. And, and, and all of us have this. All of us. 
This is not, uh, this doesn't apply to just some people. This applies to every one of us. It applies to Pastor Philip. It applies to every one of us that are a child of God. We are always constantly going to need to be challenged to do what is essential and to, and to practice the essential things, not the trivial things in our lives. Well, I tell you what, great discussion. Let's jump into five things that we can look at here in the early part of Janu uh, January 2021 that I believe can help us as we focus ourselves and push back on the busyness of life and focus, as you all have said, on our Lord and Savior. First thing that a focused life is going to look like is a focused life is going to use our time or we know we'll lose that time. Okay? Somebody look in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 21 for us and read that passage of Scripture. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 21. Let you live. Make you complete in every good work to do His will, working in you what is well pleasing in His sight. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Yeah, through Jesus Christ. Thank you. Yeah. All right, what is that saying, Craig? As you read that verse, if you were reading that and you were having your devotional time, what, what, is, what is the principle there that we can pull from this writer in Hebrews? Um, he's working in your spirit to make you complete every good work. So right, okay. Start what you've been, and finish what you start. Right. And, uh, and he's giving you a task to just make sure you sit and do it all the way. Yeah. Exactly. So, so here is the universal principle of either use it or lose it. Okay? Now, okay, so y'all, you all can probably kind of tell that I haven't been working my muscles too much lately. Okay? Scott, one time I had cannons up here. I mean, I mean, they were massive, you know? Right, Jim, you remember that, don't you? You're a real thing. <laughs> Did you carry a permit? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> All right. What happens to those muscles if you don't use them, folks? It's called atrophy. They shrink. <laughs> what happens to our mind when we just let it drift aimlessly and we don't focus on the essential things in our life? What happens? It gets weak, doesn't it? It gets, we just, we just believe any old thing. We just follow any old thing. What happens to our, our money? You know, if, 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 if we don't um, invest our money, there's a principle there. If you take a little bit of money, even the smallest amount, and use it wisely and invest it somewhere, what does it do? Over time, it grows, doesn't it? If you don't use that money wisely, then it's not going to grow. How about our talents? God's given each one of us at the time of our salvation, He gave us, He indwelled into us certain talents, gifts, and abilities for the edification of His kingdom, for His family. And if we don't use those talents, whatever they are, guess what? They get old. They get dusty. They, uh, God can't use them. So here's this idea as we think about the new year and as we think about what a focused life looks like and we put some, some detail with that, then we, we need to learn how to use our time wisely. If not, we're going we're gonna to lose it. Um, you know, the funny thing about exercise is this. And this is a, a really good illustration we can all identify with. When you are fatigued and when you feel uh, like you have no energy and all you want to do is go lay down on the couch, do you know what happens if you put your ten if you make yourself now, if you discipline yourself, if you focus and you put your tennis shoes on and you go outside and take a walk, do you know what happens? The opposite happens, doesn't it? You then begin to develop energy and stamina and strength. But if you go lay down on that couch and give in to it, 
you, you, you just get more tired, don't you? You just get, okay. Well, that's the, that's the illustration in our spiritual lives. Whatever we need in life, okay, whatever it is, if we'll, if we'll invest it wisely, and that includes our time. And one way we can do that, folks, is start focusing on the needs of others, okay? We are so inwardly focused and so self-focused many times. And God tells us this in, in the power of focus life. He says, don't focus only on yourself. God never meant for us to spend all of our time on ourselves. That might be why we feel like we've run out of time. If we're spending too much time on ourselves, the principle of use it or lose it is not going to work. There's a spiritual <laughs> principle here at play. It's, it's only when we look outside ourselves, it is like our tithe, it is like our muscles, it is like our talents. When we give God more of our time, he then begins to multiply our efforts and really uses it for his good and his glory. Okay, second thing we're going to need to do if we're going to have the power of a focused life is we're going to need to get control of our time. How many of you just feel like, oh my, I've said this before so many times, I, my goodness, I, my life's just out of control. Have, has anybody ever said that before? My life's just out of control. I, I, the time, I don't have time for this, I don't have time for that. My life just out of control. All right, well, let's look at Ephesians in the New Testament. Look at Ephesians chapter 5, and let's look at verse 15. Ephesians 5, 15. And when somebody has that verse of Scripture, read that for us, okay? Ephesians 5, 15. Go ahead, Randy. <clears throat> See then that ye walk circumspectly. Mm-hmm. Not as fools, but as wise. Okay. All right. Thank you, Randy. All right. Paul, the writer of Ephesians, is telling us here about this idea of getting control of our time. He's saying, be careful how you live. Don't live like what? Fools. But like those who are all right, so you got s s several things going here. First of all, you've got this idea of, of Paul is telling us to be careful. All right, what does that mean in a spiritual application? This idea where Paul is is encouraging us to be careful. What does that mean? What does that mean to you? Protect your mind. Yeah. Protect your mind. <clears throat> boundaries. Put margins. Boundaries around what you're going to, to do. Don't, don't let it hit you and then you gotta make a decision on the fly. No, already premeditate, mm -hmm. already deliberate, and already determine this is, this is where I'm gonna be and I'm not moving, okay? I love that because Daniel said he purposed in his heart. Yes. Before anything, he knew what, how he was gonna react yes. in his heart yes. before. Now, all right, so here's a word and here's a word. A fool is anyone that lives without the Lord, honey. That okay. doesn't have the Lord in their life. Because yeah. you're going to be foolish without Him. Only okay. with Him and the power of the Holy Spirit can we be wise. So Correct. A yeah. fool is just a name for an you know, someone that doesn't know the Lord. Okay. So there's two, <laughs> two categories of people in our world today, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Paul is telling us here, he's saying if you're going to live a focused life, not only are you going to need to use your time wisely or you're going to lose it, but you're going to need to get control of your time, okay? How many of you use a calendar? That's a great tool, folks. That is a fan. I learned a long time ago, your calendar is your friend, okay? It is your friend. Learn to use it. Be disciplined with it, all right? Get control of your time. How many hours are in a week? How many hours are in a week? <clears throat> 24 in a day, so 24 times seven. There's 168 <laughs> hours in every week. You're not going to get any more than that. But you're not going to get any less of it. You're going to get 168 hours every single week. The question is, how will we use that 168 hours? Okay, your time is your life. 
You waste your time. You waste your life. Do you have time for everything? Wanda, do you have time for everything? We have time. You don't have time for everything? Okay. How you're right. You don't. So how do you how do you take that focused life now and these principles and push that into a hundred and sixty eight hour a week? Per so week. God he said you okay. pray, you have your prayer time and you ask God to reveal what's important in life and you follow his direction. What is essential in life, not necessarily and what is things that true. We do. We, we do because it's part of being in this world. We've mm-hmm. got to live. We have to make a living. We care for our families. I mean, mm-hmm. But the way I see it is just through all that we do in life. Mm-hmm. Again, be that light. Yeah. Talk about the Lord. You, yeah. you, you'd be surprised how many people at work look at you and want you to say something. Mm-hmm. We're so scared, but yet they mm-hmm. really want you to say something yeah. about right. the Lord. Yeah. Want yeah. you to get it started. Yeah, yeah. they did. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Then yeah. they jumped right in. That's yeah, right. I met yeah. a man like that yeah. this week. Yep, yeah. definitely, Randy. That's right. Sometimes when I'm breaking down like what I have time for and what I don't, I ask myself, what has eternal value? Amen, yes. So I love this question, Dottie, that I, I got this from one of our Christian authors many years ago, and it has it has helped me so much. So it's when C.S. you Lewis, is it C.S. Lewis? Eternal, it's yeah. eternally useless. Yeah, C.S. yeah, Lewis yeah, 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 yeah. So so ask yourself this question: When you're evaluating your time, the organization of your time, the management of the, your time. When you're um, when when you're trying to to um, accomplish all the goals and objectives you have in your life, when you're trying to understand what is essential, what is trivial, what is careful, what is careless, I learned to ask this question of myself a long time ago, and it puts things in perspective. What will it matter 100 years from now? What will it matter 100 years from now? When you ask that question, you really get to what is essential because only what we pass on to our family, our children, our friends, our neighbors, only what our life passes on in Christ uh, is passed on, okay? <clears throat> Nothing material, all right? So um, good, good discussion. A uh, couple of things here. God... This is the good news. God does not and never has expected us to do everything. You don't have to be Superman. You don't have to be Superwoman. You don't have to be um, a spiritual giant. You don't have to be any of that. We, the truth is, we can't be that. So stop striving. Stop trying to be everything. Learn to get control of our time. Learn to be able to to manage that calendar. And then, when that happens, don't feel guilty about it. Don't don't feel like you've let somebody down. Now, you know, um, so David and Sandra and Wanda and I were talking last night. This is going to be one of those places I'm going to have to stop this right now because, folks, the rest of this is just too dadgum good. It's just too good for me just to rush through it. So we got three. You'll be doing one on one. No, that's the week after. Oh, okay. So we got three more really good principles that we can identify to help us live as part of a of a focused life. So if it's okay with you all, I'm gonna say let's kind of wrap this up now, and then you keep your outlines and let's continue in our biblical discussion as we go through the power of a focused life because it's just a little bit too good to rush through this morning. Amen. But I want to just ask you, I, I just want to get some encouragement from you. So I am not the only person that God is speaking to this morning about this idea of time, time management, what is essential, what is trivial. Is that right? Does it? Has, okay. All right. Good. Because I will tell you this: through the years, 
the the person that I'm teaching to the most is myself. All right. So when I'm teaching, um, just know this: I'm needing to hear this more than you are. I'm needing this more than you are. And the Lord is just um, giving us the opportunity to share with one another. So. I think as we mature in Christ and as life changes, you know, there are different stages. You got those little children and they take a lot of energy yeah. and effort. Yeah. And you got right. you know, the the high school years and they're involved yeah. in sports yeah. and things like I mean yeah. life but you're spending, remember, time with your children. Yeah. You can still use those opportunities. Absolutely. But as we mature up in Christ, the Lord I think for me gives me clearer insight of yes. what is Right. Priority for him. You Absolutely. Know, it just, yeah. And it comes, just keep following Christ. Yeah. He makes it clear as mm -hmm. every day as we keep following yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. So in this world today, I think the key that we can take away from the first two principles of a focused life is this idea of busyness. Okay. We're going to have this in our lives. There's going to be this busyness in our lives. Okay. But. We have got to daily pick his cross up and carry it. And we do that by understanding what is essential. And time with the Lord, whether you do it in the morning with a cup of coffee, or whether you do it like me in the car listening to Christian radio as I drive and meditating, or whether you do it like Wanda in the morning with her cup of coffee, the point is it's got to be an essential part of our life is to spend that time with the Lord and um, grow ever closer to Him. And really, Amen. really Amen. you study God's Word, but then you, you talk to Him all throughout the day. Yeah. When I said that, you know, I mean, I'm talking to Him all day long, yeah. all, right. all throughout yeah. the day. Yeah. And I think that, yeah. that getting close to Him Help set that day for me, yeah. and then I can talk to him the rest of the day. Yeah, man, it's, I tell you what, the Lord is just so encouraging, and I'll share just this brief testimony with you, and then we'll we'll have prayer and we'll go. The Lord is so encouraging because all I got this morning were texts from people that were not going to be able to be here this morning, and uh, for for different reasons, but all of them valid reasons. And so, you know, I'm human. I'm just like you. So I was like. Okay, Wanda, it'll be, you know, I know Wanda will be there because when I left the house at 8.30, Wanda told me, she said, I'll be there. I'll be there at Bible study. So I knew Wanda was going to be there. And then, wow, just to, you know, to see Randy and Jim and Kathy come back. Let me say it's good to be back. Amen. And Scott, you know, man, what a blessing, you know. It's so that, wonderful to be here. And that's just how God is. He just encourages us where we are. And when we need it, God just sends that encouragement. So let's go, let's carry this, this attitude of worship and family. Let's carry this forward into our worship service and worship the Lord, okay? And I'll see you back next week, and we'll finish up with three more principles of a focused life. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for your time in the Word this morning. Lord Jesus, thank you for the power of your Word. Thank you for these words that Paul and the writer of Hebrews have uh, shared with us and the writer of Psalms. We are just, Father, enriched and encouraged every time that we open the Word of God. And thank you for the blessing that we have to share the Word of God with each other. Thank you for every person that is here this morning and the families they represent. Bless us as we go into the worship hour. I pray for Pastor Philip as he leads us in our a message in our prayer. I pray for the praise band as they lead us in worship and song, those that will have part in the prayers. And Father, I pray for our little children that will go into splash zone. I pray for their little precious minds and their hearts, Lord, that are so easily uh, influenced. And uh, I just pray that our teachers, uh, thank you for our teachers as they love on them this morning and teach them the Word of God. These things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Amen.